It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And we've got C.D. Lamb. Always staying busy, he's your league leader in receiving yards. It's the 49ers and the Hawks, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the 12s. Today, week 17 is upon us, and we've got a good one in store here, as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at the Seahawks team as they get ready here. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for the visiting 49ers, it's late in the year. We all know it. We've seen the calendar for these. Get strapped in. It's just about time to get the party started. And off we go from Seattle. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And leading him out is their fifth-year quarterback. I like this guy, and the reason I do... First play, and Purdy wants to throw it. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard game. First carry for Christian McCaffrey. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Devin Witherspoon takes him down defensively. Now second and five. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Two straight runs of five yards, first and ten. And throwing here, Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called the big tight end's name. But I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game goes on. Purdy to throw it on first down. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. First and goal. A chance for an early statement here on the road. Oh, how about this on first and goal? And from the 9, they get this to the 5-yard line. It's a bit of a dangerous part of the field for him to break into their bag of tricks, but for a minute there, I thought it was going to set up perfectly for him. Instead, they don't get into the end zone, but they do pick up positive yardage. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Christian McCaffrey with his ninth rushing touchdown on the year. And the 49ers will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. Well, just about an ideal start to this one offensively because on the road, you want to make sure you quiet the home crowd early. And how do they do it? Nice march to start things off, let the run game find its footing early. That drive certainly checked a lot of boxes, and they finished it off with a touchdown run. Moody good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. 
And they will be let out by a man in his sophomore campaign as the quarterback. And his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is team won, managed the game effectively, led them to victory. He's doing all the right things. Oh, he shifts past him. Well, he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. In a word, I would say productive, finding the end zone three different times. Is it possible that you're really underselling it? Three touchdowns, just going to call him productive? Right. Yeah. What, what do you want? This guy had a nose for the end he zone. He was good. Had a snoop full, didn't he? How about that? Big time game. Sticking with Walker on second down. Good footwork at the 30. And this will be a Seahawks first down as he'll take this up to about the 33-yard line. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. And try to find Jackson Smith and Jigba, and it'll bring up third down. You look at this Niner defense, this unit against the pass, hoping to get better for sure, number 25 in the NFL right now. Defending the pass has not been one of their strong suits throughout the season, but they'll have any hopes of making waves in January. They've got to improve in this area. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And he used the proper word there, dependable, and sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. Now a second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. That is incomplete. Not the warmest starts throwing the football. He was one for three, now one for four on the opening drive. So getting him comfortable is the key. And for him, it might be different than what we think is comfortable. We're probably thinking swing passes, easy check downs. Some guys, they're better off throwing it downfield. That's what really loosens them up. And this will move the chains again as the tackle is going to be made at the 49ers, 35. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second down and five. On the give, here's Charbonnet. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play. Touchdown, Seahawks! Jackson Smith and Jim Bell with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Seahawks are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL, but I don't know if last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that as he continued to survey the field, picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second-year quarterback. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it will come out to the 25. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. And he'll 
They'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Well, this defense for the Seahawks, they were terrific last week in the win over the Rams. Yeah, what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down, and they're playing with extreme confidence. And they're going to get him down well short of the first, as he can only get this to the 30. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one hears away. 51 yards on the punt there. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time, we give you a look at what's going on there. Well, including this week, three weeks remain in the regular season, Charles. And it is going to be interesting to see how this playoff picture sorts itself out before we head into the postseason. Competitive, entertaining postseason. That's what we're always striving for. But I think we get it during the regular season, too, because you never know how things are going to go during the final weeks of the season. Every team pulling out all the stops to get a better seed or just to get one of those seven seats at the table. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw here. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. 60 catches for him now on the year. This last one, a first down. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33, as they've got it as we resume action. Back to throw again. He finds Smith and Jigba. The gain of five, and it'll be second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. It's the former number four overall pick, Cleland Thurl, that got in there to bring him down. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down per minute, and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. Yeah, this is taken at the 23. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and then they punted to football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They go play action here, Purdy. That's caught downfield by Kittle. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. So now, following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Purdy now to throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. McCaffrey running up the middle and tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. 
They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And this time he is in. Yes. Christian McCaffrey with his 13th touchdown of the year and second of the game. And the 49ers have now taken the lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Moody good with the extra point. And that makes the score 14-7. to and he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. You know, Charles, season winding down. Time to maybe look ahead to the offseason. What do you see these guys going after, either in the draft or free agency? Well, with the season that they're having, just about every position is up for grabs right now. No one is really safe, but the focal point's always the quarterback position. And he may be auditioning to try and stay with his own current team. I think he's auditioning for the rest of the league to try and find a spot because I think this team is looking for a new quarterback. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Straight ahead, Walker. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Now, we all know that an offense coordinator and quarterback, they're aligned at the hip. But when you've got a runner who can get you that kind of yardage, that guy's invaluable. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Catch is made by Metcalf. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. First down, Seattle. Six. The game there. They'll set up to throw. Throw out wide to Walker. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be second down. Running left is Walker. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's a second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. The ball's out, McCaffrey lost. 
lost it. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think they should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> and now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. A second down throw for Purdy. And this will be caught by Mooney. Well, remember, these two teams met earlier in the year in Santa Clara with the Niners coming out on top. So a win here in Seattle, tough as that may be, will give them the season sweep. Purdy will look to throw again here. Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now on first down, it's Purdy. Got a man, that's Ayuk. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Second down and three. The throwing here, Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And Debo going to have a Niners first down as he's brought down at the 16. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17 as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. We get started out in the 50th state, the island of Hawaii in Honolulu. And it's the Cardinals who have the lead as they play the second quarter. A touchdown run there for Javante Williams. From there, we'll head down to the Big Easy. Check on the Saints at home at the Superdome. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. Lamar Jackson has a touchdown pass. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Saquon Barkley accounting for the lone scoring thus far as he's cashed in with a touchdown run. We saw the former All-Pro Christian McCaffrey up to his old tricks in that first half. He had a nose for the end zone as he wound up with two touchdowns on the ground in those first two quarters. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Second and five. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Smith and Jigbo holding it in on the out route. 
And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver trying to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, some strong running. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. No surprise to see a sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. Brings up second and five at the Niners' 45-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Noah Fan with a catch, shot across the ground. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. So first and 10 now from the 30. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. We're following the play here. Now we've got an injury. And not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. On second down, it's Walker. About three yards there to the 27. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. But the passing windows are just not there. That's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And his throw is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. So five yards here, five on the play, and that will bring up second down. A gain of five brings up second and five at the 43-yard line. Up the gun, McCaffrey. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. 
The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes a little tread left on the tires. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. From the 23, this is second and three. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Henry. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. Just a simple run play there on third and one. But this D was up to the challenge and stopped them bringing up fourth down. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And his kick is good. And that'll make this a seven point game. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They trail 20 to 13 our score as they have it first and 10. Here's Walker to start the drive. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. But well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find the hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Over the middle, finding Smith and Jimbo. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers, and ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Fred Warner, and this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about it. he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. There's Purdy on first and 10. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. 
brings up second and seven at the 36 yard line. Back to throw, Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. Only able to gain a couple there, and it brings up third and five now. So it's a quarter that saw these two teams trade field goals here as we've reached the end of three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. This offense so far on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Purdy from the gun. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call, and the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall. First on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up, but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop him. I like the confidence he showed. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Sticking with Walker on second down. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game, and all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, wide open, complete! They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. Just a breakdown there defensively. It looked like someone got their wires crossed because no one seemed to pick him up at all. He's running free, and there's not a quarterback in the league who's going to miss that throw. That's a huge play. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Walker will get about halfway there as he takes this from the four down to the two. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. From the two now, second and goal. Walker once more. But he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop, but when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. No offense from four yards out. And the Seahawks are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. But we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. The try here for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's Noah Fant who caps things off with the touchdown. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. 
Yeah, the 49ers getting set to trot out there. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 45 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out. There he goes, left side. Touchdown. Debo Samuel with career touchdown number 91. He joins a group that includes Tony Dorsett and Isaac Bruce, among others. And the Niners strike quickly to take the lead here in the fourth. Now Moody for the PAT. And they will take a seven-point lead now. The long touchdown pass gets them six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. On play action, they'll throw. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. On first down, Purdy. He'll get this into the hands of IU. And he's taken down inside the 30. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Purdy now to throw. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. Now Purdy. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he's down inside the 15. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Nine-yard line, second and six. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. Something we haven't really seen much of from him, an incomplete pass. Yeah, last week he finished at 70%. This week he's up over 80%. I don't know how you slow him down. Touchdown! George Kittle, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. 
We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over. And here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here. and They've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Moody good with the extra point and the lead now up to 14. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you, an interception's result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Boy, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. It's now third down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Roquan Smith, and they're going to be set up in the red zone right around the 17-yard line. Boy, so another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Now on first down, it's Purdy. And this one is incomplete. On second down, here's Henry. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 154 left, as they call the timeout defensively. And he'll only get this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So with that, you figure ah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Second and six. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. With the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. They'll give it up to McCaffrey, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. 
And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. 67 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. So the victory here for San Francisco, and we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe 